am I bipolar now too? Because how can I be so mentally disturbed one day and then the next day, like, I'm actually okay and feeling happy? You know, it makes you start thinking that, okay, something's wrong with you, you're crazy, <laughs> which, I mean, that is true. I am a little cry cry. Mr. McRae is in a coma right now, and he has been for over two weeks. Um, he was flown from Yuma, where we live, to here in Tucson uh, two weeks ago on Monday. So that's like two weeks and a couple of days already. And it's pretty serious. Um, and that's all I'm going to share regarding that. Um, why he's in a coma is irrelevant. Um, I mean, he does have a brain injury, I'll say that, but that's that's. That's also as far as what I'm gonna say regarding that because x-rays and, and probably really strong pain medication and I can tell them, don't even trip. If they don't give you strong pain medication, let me know, I'll go to Mexico. Like, and, and I told him, if they start asking you what you're taking for your seizures, just say valerian root, that's it, keep it simple. Cause it's not, it's not like it's gonna matter anyways, you know? It, 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 they, they don't really be paying attention to all the crap that we mentioned that he takes. And besides that, if, that doesn't even matter, you know? So I don't want, I want Paul to spend as little amount of time explaining himself as possible. So keep it simple. What do you use for seizures? Valerian root. That's it. Like, we don't need to go through the whole spiel and tell them everything because that's not what we're here for. You know, we're here at the hospital. I mean, this is what I was telling him. I'm still not there, you know. Um, we're not there to be interrogated. We're not there to be, you know, ask a million questions or talk about seizures. We're there to get x-rays to find out what happened to your back and get some pain medication like we've been thinking about how what blessings have come out of him having seizures you know there are so many blessings that have come out of it his mouth is like all open so i try not to show his because he's like you know i just i don't know baby and i'm just thinking in my head like the only people that know that i'm live right now is supporters so the fact that they're asking me if I'm on Facebook Live, obviously a supporter is calling the hospital and telling them that, you know, and telling them whatever. And I, I don't know. She was like, we're getting calls and um, complaints that you are bringing um, outside things. And I, and I swear, Jehovah, it made me say the perfect words. So they're saying, you know, we called the doctor also and she said that. Um, you know, if you bring in food, it could be cut up fruits and things that we know, like we can see, but if it's broths, then we, we, it could be anything that you put in there. Like it could be anything at all. So they just don't know. So I'm like, oh, okay. And, and I see it as, okay, now I know. Cool. Like whatever. And then she was like, and because of this, we're going to have to ask you to leave. And I'm like, oh, okay. Whenever she opens the door, there's security waiting for me outside of the door. And there's like a crowd there. There's other hospital staff and there's two security guards, which I'm assuming they were ready to escort me out. Um, which again like I'm just not I'm not afraid like dude you just can't intimidate me you can't intimidate me when my God is as powerful as he is like it's just you don't scare me okay like I don't give a damn how big and bad you think you are they walked out of the room they wa they walked out of the room and then while they were alone while me and Vaughn were alone for a minute and I was like Vaughn um, just to let you know you can sign yourself out um, you you can uh, tell them yeah they didn't they told me I couldn't go back yeah they said I have to leave and I'm not allowed to return at all you're in my light mommy <gasps> They said I have to leave and I'm not allowed to return. Um, so I told him, Vaughn, like, I, f I almost feel like you should come home. I said, I, I feel like you haven't had seizures for a whole 24 hours. I said, I am not sure that they're going to respect your wishes while I'm gone. And I can't be here anymore. I'm a little bit nervous about that. I said, you, like, you are already seizure free for 24 hours. I feel like if you wanted to go home, you can go home. I said, they're not giving you anything besides Tylenol around the clock and antibiotics, which anti I don't even know if he has an infection. He was running a fever, but I feel like they, I don't, I swear, I don't even think, I don't even think that he was, had an infection. I am pretty sure that they assumed it because he was running a fever, but I am pretty sure he's running a fever because he only takes two milligrams of Ativan and they give him three at once. My husband's body is so much more pure than 
a lot of people's. Even though he has the seizures, I, it's because of emotional trauma. It's not because of physical or unhealthy eating, in, in my unprofessional opinion. So his body runs a very different way. You can't just put something like pharmaceutical medications in such a heavy dose in a body who doesn't consume any type of Western medication, any type of, like that, that doesn't even go in his, like that is what I was under the assumption of, okay? That's what they make you feel like. It's a, you're not allowed to do anything. You gotta sit there and allow them to do whatever they want to you, you know? That, that's how they make it seem. And I'm like, no baby, you, you are in charge of you. If you don't wanna be here, you can leave. And you can sign papers for us to go. And so um, I said, now, I don't want you to feel like you gotta choose or you gotta come, but I just want you to know that this is kind of what I'm feeling that you should do. And, you know, if you are more comfortable being here, then, you know, that's fine. He's like, well, what if I have any more? And I said, well, if you have more, then I can take you back. Um, and if you have more, then we can explore other options or I can take you straight to Tucson because they wanted to transfer him anyways. Um, I said, you know, they ran a very important test, which was the lumbar puncture, but that takes 48 hours for us to get the results of the cultures. So right now you're just in here waiting. That's all you're doing. So I feel like, you know, I can take care of you when you come home and, and I know I can take really good care of you. So then the nurse came back in and he says, um, can I like, I mean, he can barely speak up. He barely had bass in his voice. He can barely talk. And he's saying, I want to, I want to leave. And she's like, okay, but do you know that, you know, if you still this and that leaving against this, you know, you can get this, that, that, or even death. Like, what the, you know, just get the hell out of his face with all that. But I just kept my, I kept my mouth shut because maybe she has to say this or that, whatever, whatever. But he was, you know, he kind of looked at me. He has such a sad puppy dog face whenever he's sad. It's so, it's so sad to see him in such a bad spot, you know? And it's like, F all of these doctors that put him in a position like that. His name, because he, he was not there. That I got a problem with. Like, uh -uh, I'm not comfortable leaving these people, leaving my husband with these people no more. So I strongly advised him, baby, I think that it would be good to leave. And he asked to leave. And they gave him that whole spiel, this, that, and the other. And so then while they're taking the IVs out of him, I asked the lady if she can bring, this was a new person. I asked the lady if she can bring a wheelchair. She says, no, because he's leaving AMA, he cannot get a wheelchair. He needs to walk out. And I'm just thinking like, all right, I'm gonna have to pick him up. My husband, Vaughn, could not stand up. He couldn't even sit up on his own. Like there was absolutely no way he was going to be able to walk out of that hospital at all. He did not have the strength in him. There was barely any life force inside of his body. You don't need that much. You know, two milligrams was gonna be sufficient enough in my opinion, but whatever. So then after he ended up coming back into the room, which I haven't recorded, and um, he was like, you know, um, normally I don't do this, but um, I'm gonna need you to provide some proof of of some type of marriage certificate. If you're claiming that you're his wife, I need to see some proof because normally I don't go against people's wishes, but you're making really bad decisions here. I'm paraphrasing. It was around that. I swear I was praying so much. So I'm here laying on the bed and then the night nurse comes in and she's scanning the medication that she's about to give him. And I ask her, oh, what are you gonna give him? She says Depakote. Depakote is a seizure medication. Before she got in there, let me tell you, Vaughn told me that there was a guy that came into the room that would like civilian attire and was very forceful about, you need to take seizure medication. You're in the hospital for a reason. We are here to treat you, da 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 da. Vaughn didn't have it in him to fight. He said, no, he didn't want it, but the doctor said whatever he said, but Vaughn couldn't respond after that. Why should he? He, he just had seven seizures, he's exhausted was never used to that much food like we didn't he did not eat that much and she was like miss mccray he's lost 20 pounds since he's been here and i'm thinking like don't miss mccray like duh. as if that's supposed to scare me or make me feel bad or make me change my mind like the man's also was very very active always always moving and now he ain't moved I mean, a little bit, like his arms, but besides that, he's not going nowhere. He's literally in the bed, not moving for three and a half weeks. I expect there to be weight loss. I don't expect it to be the same. And then they're giving him poison. And like, don't, don't miss me with that. You're not, don't, don't, don't. You're not scaring me. You're not making me feel no type of way. Like I, what I say still stands. They've always overfed him. Just because he lost weight doesn't mean let's, push the food anyways because look at what he does how bad would that be for him to vomit i'm not opening them you need to wait how bad would it be for him to vomit and it coming out here and then you got to worry about it going into his lungs like come on you know so i was just remaining calm jehovah was helping me with what i was saying and keeping calm and all of that but it was just annoying and so whenever i was talking to the nutritionalist 
you know, she wanted to show me, do you see like the sides of his head is concave? So she's trying to show me where he's lost weight. And I'm like, okay, okay. You know, like, all right, just, okay. You know, just talking like that, just, uh, all right, okay, all right. And then she's like, do you have any questions? I said, I'm not speaking in front of him. I don't want him to hear this conversation. But go ahead and finish the exam, and then we can go ahead and step out of the room. She's like, oh, okay. Well, we're done. I just wanted to show you that. I'm like, okay, let's go. And I rip the gown off and I take it off, wash my hands, and then we did. It's like, mm, I don't want to say that word, but like, girl, bye. Like, don't, you're not intimidating me. Like, in fact, I hope you feel that that's not going to happen. You're not going to intimidate me. There's just, no. No. We're Vaughn. It's poison. So they had printed out paperwork on Kate Farms because they wanted to tell me about the vegan formula that I can order for him. And so they were trying to um, tell me about it. And I was like, oh, good. You know what? I ended up ordering a case this morning and it should be here within two days. And they were like, oh, okay, good. Blah, 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 blah. But just to let you know, we need to put him on something because I'm not going to allow him to be without nutrition. And I said, okay, but clearly my husband's having a negative reaction to the formula. So I am not like, I am against that. I do not want him to have it. They're like, well, I am his physician and I'm just letting you know, I am not going to allow him to be without any nutrition and we're going back and forth. Oh, I think not. His body is having a negative reaction and he cannot have this. They're like, well, it's detrimental to his health for him to go two days without food and I, and, or for him to be without food. And I said, and I think it's detrimental to his health to give him food that his body views as poison. Like just a couple of days ago, he was able to breathe without a ventilator. He wasn't having these jerks. He wasn't this and that. And then they were like, do you understand his injury that he has like ha has the doctors talked to you about this and I said yes and I understand very well and I know where you're coming where you're getting at so I do understand his diagnosis and all of that but I see things differently and so they're like okay well can you explain to me what you know and what I'm not going to do I, I am not going to repeat what doctors have said so we're going back and forth she says well it's detrimental to his health and I was like ma'am people fast longer than, you know, two days. And I don't see how his body is going to negatively decline if he doesn't have feeding for two days. You know, it's like his body is viewing this stuff as poison. The nutritionist goes, well, we've done studies. You know, she's like, we've done studies and this is well blankety blank. And this is food that's really good for people who are in critical care, blah, blah, miss me with that. So she's going on and on and on about how great this crap is and this formula is and why it's so good for the body. And so I said, you know, that's really great. And, and I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that it's been studied. I'm glad that it's beneficial for the body for whatever reason. I don't know. It is not good for my husband and his body is having a negative reaction. And the physician said, okay, I'm just trying to allow you to get a choice between this one and this one, because I am not going to allow him to be without feeding. And I said, even though I am his wife and I am saying no, do not give it to him. She said, yes. I said, in that case, I need to contact a lawyer. She said, yes, you can do that. But in the meantime, he's going to get something. Hey, Brian, how you doing? My name is Leticia Bias, and I was wondering, do you have my son at your hospital? His name is Marvon McCray. What was the last name? McCray, M-C-C-R-A-Y. Um, and what relation are you? I'm his mother. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to give out any information on him. At all? Even, because I'm, I came to Tucson to see him. At all. You got to talk to his wife. Okay. And there's no way, like, anyone else I can maybe speak to? Nope, she is the only one that we're allowed to give information to. Even with me visiting him? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. All right. That's fine, parents. Huh? Are, are okay. you the nurse? No, I'm not his nurse. Okay. I found them going to South. Is it okay for them to visit? Uh, absolutely not, no. In fact, we need to call security. Hold on. Only, only daddy, and this, this is not his, this is my wife. How do you mean I can't see my son? I'm going to go to crazy. I'm going to do 3,000 miles, man. You don't need to pray. I know, Rima. I know. Hey, Kim, it's your best auntie, Sal. Uh, was Mr. McCray able to have any visitors right now? Besides his wife. Um, should only his wife be allowed in? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Ask a social worker. The social worker said yeah. see I know. Just watch. Just watch out Jehovah. Always. Always. Comes through. Each and every single time. And we, we confirmed that you're in the state of Arizona. Um, although you are, and we do recognize that you are the medical power of attorney, okay. um, you do have the decision on what information is shared. But um, in the state of Arizona, you do not have the ability to um, decide who can and cannot visit the patient. So anyone can visit? Yeah, we can restrict the visitors, unfortunately. Yeah. Can I see that in writing, please? Um, so this is something that has been confirmed with the social worker. It's not something that has been documented, but we have confirmed with multiple people. Okay. Um, but that is, um, that's a valid statement. Can I see the, or can you contact the social worker, please? Um, I can, I can try and contact the social okay. worker that's working. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, um, you know, we have the understanding. That yeah, that's just, the, that's just the policy, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did I, she's not? She gave him up. When like, she, if that's the case, then strangers can come into the room and request to visit him. Yeah, and really anybody can. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we can't really restrict the visitors. Yeah. But if I'm in the room and there's only one person limited, then they can't come in, right? Because I was already coming back, and I'm coming back to the room. Once I leave the room, I have to go to the bathroom. They want to come in, but I know it's a very strict one person, you know, policy for. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So good. I'm just gonna go to the room, and then whenever I have to leave, then. But in the meantime, if you could get the social worker. Yeah, or paperwork so that I could see that, and then I'll, I can research too. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look into if we can get it like somewhere in writing, but but that is the policy. That's you know, unfortunately that's where, where it is. Right. I just need to see that okay. in well, writing. Thank you. So we don't have to show you in writing because okay. that's, that's just our policy. We're telling you that's our policy, but we'll look and see if there's a social worker that can come talk to you and tell you in person. Okay. But I don't know that I'm going to be able to produce it like, right. in actual writing. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Well. And, and you know, uh, for now, you'll just have to follow along with our policies. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, sure. I don't want to be uh, go against. Yeah, anything. We're, we're not trying to say this like to, you know, to. You know, be, be mean or, or put you down in any way, but we, we, we did honestly look into it today. And that's unfortunately the policy that we can't really restrict, you know, comes in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I speak to the higher ups too? That. Maybe I'm gonna go now, okay? Did you turn away from me? You don't want to hear it? Sir. Baby, don't turn your face away from me. I gotta go, I gotta go shopping for the lambs. I need to get some key lines, some bananas. I promise I will be here tomorrow. In a coma oh with God, his wife who God. won't tell his family why he's in a coma. <laughs> My outfit that I'm wearing. Can someone take a screenshot? Yesterday, I put my saliva on him. Show sure did. I went all up in my my and put it on him, on the top of his head, on his neck, and on his arm. Liva carries information. It's gonna go through his body, and it's gonna tell him, "I'm here. I want you. Wake up." Listen, I am so. I'm so thankful to my admins for keeping me oblivious to crap because <laughs> I'm just like, I'm here living my best life in McCray Island, oblivious, you might even say ignorant, you know, like, I'm good. Me and my children are happy, healthy, living our best life over here.